Come along, children. Now we're going to have a little music. What's up, guys? Welcome to First Cut. This is our review of Army of the Dead. We will be talking about spoilers, so make sure you guys have seen the movie before you watch this. I am here with my crew, Sabrina Ramirez and RB3 in the house. We all finally saw Army of the Dead. I saw it Friday night. Uh, Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. Uh, Sabrina, you just saw this movie. Just watched uh, First thing I want to do, guys, is obviously... Just get general thoughts, because I feel like a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about this movie. If you've been anywhere near film Twitter, I think a lot of people have been kind of saying what they feel uh, about this movie overall. So overall, Sabrina, what are your thoughts on this film? Yeah, overall, I went into this not knowing anything. I still right now have not read anything anyone said about it or whatever. No premise, no trailer, no nothing. And I thoroughly enjoyed this. It completely exceeded my expectations because I had just had like mid expectations for a Zack Snyder zombie film. But I love the incorporation of like a heist and the setting of Las Vegas and how crazy it is to see like Las Vegas, something we see as like gross and glamorous at the same time mixed with this entire like zombie species that's that's continuing on there um i thought it was so interesting there's there's good parts about it that i really loved and then of course there's parts that i didn't which that's that's to be said about every single film but overall i had a really really good time with it and i wish it was one of those that i actually checked down a theater instead of watching on netflix interesting uh rb3 your thoughts um, well, I love this movie, yo. I, this was right up my alley. I'm all for a good old fashioned throwdown, uh, a, a, a zombie movie throwdown. Um, listen, I thought after Train to Busan came out, I thought you know we weren't gonna see any good zombie movies. I thought everything was just gonna be a rip off of that, or or it wasn't gonna everything was gonna pale in comparison to that. And also, I thought you know this was Zack Snyder returning to his bread and butter essentially because his debut film down to the dead is really what uh put him on the map in a lot of ways so i kind of felt like uh is this going to be regurgitated like is this not going to be like exactly what we want it to be um but i do gotta say it was beautiful it was awesome um i it was everything i could want in the zombie movie it had the mythology i never thought i'd see um uh, a zombie queen and king and you know, a pregnancy and uh, I, all this and a, a, a fetus being ripped out. It's crazy. I never thought I would have seen any of this in a zombie movie. Um, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. I also thought we actually got a lot more from the characters um, than I think I probably expected out of this. I actually did end up caring for a lot of the characters in this movie. Um, and I think that's the difference probably, even though I felt like some of the movie did have a little bit of that like Michael Bay, like, overlit like aesthetic especially like that kind of like newer like you know digital michael bay look that that's been kind of going on but i felt like this was so much more developed so way better written way better developed with all these people to the point where i actually ended up caring for a lot of storylines by the time um you know they ultimately and this is a spoiler review so we could talk about it by the time they ultimately by the time they ultimately die like and and that's something you expect in a zombie movie for everybody to die yeah yeah everybody expects everybody to die but you don't expect to care as much as you care at least for me i didn't expect to care as much as i care by the end of this movie so Uh, it's interesting you say uh mythology because that's the one thing that stood out there's I, i believe there's one scene specifically where the coyote uh girl explains like the breakdown of like what type of zombies these are because i was kind of confused in the opening scene as far as like i was like just you have military dudes there shoot it in the head this should not be difficult but then she explains no these are alpha zombies they can literally think uh they have their own style their own culture they have everything that they have going on and then there's the regular ass zombies who are the walking dead type zombies that we all have gotten used to i'm a a Walking Dead, you know, fan for many years. I've watched a lot of The Walking Dead many, many times through. Uh, so I'm very familiar with with that kind of mentality. But also Dawn of the Dead. We 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 talked about how Zack Snyder kind of got his big startup with Dawn of the Dead. And in that movie, RB3, there is actually a zombie fetus, uh, a zombie baby. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, and and I that's why I was like, this is Zack Snyder. He's doing it again. 
uh it did i didn't necessarily think that was a negative but i just thought that i was like oh i have seen that before uh, <laughs> in Dawn I of the yes i found so uh, many yeah. like easter eggs to all different types of horror films there was literally a moment that was taken out from like an american werewolf uh like it's it's really interesting kind of like all the different nods that he had to horror filmmaking zombie filmmaking and i love that you mentioned that with the mythology and the types of zombies that we're seeing because we did have the different species and of course the alpha is the one that we're introduced to in the beginning and immediately i was like yo he is gonna do some damage and it's like the ones that stem from him uh necessarily are the ones that are stronger and faster and yeah. It freaked me the heck out because one of my fears that I know is completely unrealistic, but like zombie films stress me out. So then yeah. watching these stressful situations that our characters have to go to through, because like RB3 said, you do get attached to these characters. And I thought with an ensemble this big, I didn't expect to be attached to every single one the way that I was. And um, seeing them go through all of this, it's just kind of interesting how he like melded all of these different ideas when some even though you expect everybody to die or to see a lot of your favorite people die in a film like this especially a heist film where they're inside an enclosed space like you really do think this is basically like a suicide squad situation happening with this team um but it's just crazy how it really was impactful i think the thing that ruined it the most for me uh was just like and i know this is something that i usually don't mind but I think he just completely overused like the shallow focus of it. So like the mm -hmm. filmmaking part of it, it just kept going over and over. And in the moments where of course they digitally imposed like Tig Notaro in it. And she was one of my favorite parts of the film. Uh, she was incredible, but I just think he overused that so much where it took me out at points. And at some points, I thought that certain things could have been cut out just a little bit because I don't think we need a two hour and 30 minute zombie film. That was the only kind of cons that I had with it. Other than that, I really do think it was a blast. I think all the cast was like giving it their all. Um, and yeah, so even like introducing kind of this like alpha zombie and his queen, it, it added this like really this like emotional weight to it because I felt for him because like like we said like they have a fetus yo I felt for what he was doing this is a species also I don't know if you guys noticed but like I the eyes know. were glowing there's certain zombies that had like glowing eyes yeah, I didn't notice that I was like yo I mean I like, like what is happening or... <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. Where's the where's the where's the little uh uh, uh the shiki and you know they could like have that like woke little I think, woke memes. I think yeah, I think what Snyder was doing there, and there's been a lot of conversation about it on like Army of the Dead social media, if that's even a thing now, as far as like what exactly he was I, I feel like he was setting up for sequels when it comes to like the type of zombies that we saw and maybe yeah. there's like a hint at like I don't know, like someone created zombies and maybe they put him in there or something. Uh, but I, I want to get to your point, Sabrina. Obviously, I, I did notice the focus thing a little bit, but it didn't take me out. Yeah. Uh, the thing that definitely made me go like this quite a few times and take a step back was the handheld. I was like, yo, we going in handheld. All right. <laughs> uh, that was like a few things, but I liked that. I thought it was fine. Um, but the question I have for you guys is the biggest question, which is who was the standout in this movie? I'll start with you, Sabrina. Oh, I, well, I was pleasantly surprised uh, by seeing Dave Bautista in this role uh, with his interactions with his daughter played by Ella Purnell. I just thought their relationship was really beautiful. But the only thing that pissed me off about like his daughter was that she kept making mistakes that ultimately costed so many people their lives. And in a situation like this, in any type of like horror film, of course, we're all sitting there yelling at the screens going like, no, don't go in there. Don't do this because we can see ahead where they can't. Um, and obviously they're in these like high stress situations. But yeah, Dave Bautista was really, really great. Tig Notaro, again, like I mentioned, really, really great. Um, and also uh, the guy that played Dieter. I loved him. I thought he was so much fun. Uh, the guy who was like cracking the safe. He was so much yeah, fun. The German quirky dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. I, I like them a lot, too. Uh, who do you feel like is the main standout, though, RB3, in this film? Because it's an ensemble um, film, so but if you had to pick one. Well, again, uh, to, to to go back on 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 uh, the focus point, I think the real standout was uh, uh, 
Zack Snyder cinematography. You know, what I mean, that was just uh, to me. To me, y'all say it was y'all say it was jarring and it was tough to watch. I thought it was brilliant. I love it. I love seeing that. I love I did the not say that. I love the. I, I the, said the, I noticed the, it. Hey, listen, I love it. I love the the focal length being at like negative one. You know what I mean? Like, I love the fact that the is like the focus is like razor thin. I love it. I just love that's that's the stylistic choice he made. Um, but from the cast, and in terms of the cast, yeah, in terms of the cast, I love seeing my man Amari Hardwick. He's been in so many trash black movies for years, and he finally made it to the big leagues, and he did it, and he owned up to it. I couldn't believe. He's from Power, right? Power. Uh, he's from Power. He's from all. So from... was uh. So was Homegirl from Power. Uh, um. Uh, the from, Latina um, girl. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she was yeah. great too. She was great. I'm not gonna lie. All the um. All of the characters are like really funny. Mm-hmm. Um. I even like the dude who was um. I even like the dude who who oh, man, I forget his name. He looks like the guy from Modern Family. Who was like the the the. Oh, the villain. Um, the, 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 yeah, the, the bad guy. Oh, Garrett Dillahunt. Yeah. Is that okay. his name? That uh, Gary? Yeah, he was I great. I thought even his, his part. Yeah, I, I know his name. Um, he he was he was hilarious to me too. Even the the scene where he set up old girl to like be by herself in that. Oh, in I, hated that. I, I hated that. I hated it. I hated. No, I hated. I hated him setting him up, but he was so convincing. I was like, oh, I hate this guy. Oh, that was like I, the first time. I legit, and then the fact that she like literally fought her way out of it, like for the most part. Uh, oh my but God. But she didn't though. That's what pissed me off. All right, I'll, I'll say my piece. Cause I gotta say my piece. This is a movie that features uh, a, a lot of Latinos, right? Uh, it does. And, and I, as a Latino guy who's been talking about like Latino representation, uh, I, I was like, all right. We we here we doing it and then I saw like the first girl that uh, that Batista meets up with uh, who's like you know classic Latina mechanic girl and I was like all right I've known her before and then we we meet uh, Guzman I feel like his name was uh, which is Raúl Castillo's character uh, and I was like all right this is the stereotypical cholo crazy dude like straight up like out of a Key and Peele yeah. sketch uh, <laughs> like loco bro he's loco. Um, who happens to be like a really good shot and a YouTuber. I was like, I'm in, let's do it. I've known this guy too. <laughs> and then he pulls out the chola. <laughs> oh, I got a chola in this. Oh, bro, I'm in. Here's the- oh yeah, bro, her name is Chambers, man. I'm like, all right, bro, her name is Chambers, fam. All right, let's do it. Uh, and then they added, I literally said, as long as they don't kill the chola girl first. And sure enough, I was like, y'all did me dirty. Y'all did me dirty, bro. Like the one thing I will say, and I'll, I'll finish here. Mm-hmm. At least, at least, like all the Latinos went out like badasses, right? Oh, yeah. Like Guzman went out like a badass when he pulled the grenade things, mm-hmm. and he was like, mm-hmm. "Yo, bro, like that's a badass move." Like anyone yeah. who pulls out grenades and like blows up with zombies is mm-hmm. you're a badass. And then Chambers went out when he shot her after taking out like fifty zombies, mm-hmm. and like yeah. zo- John Wick. That was like that's cool. The that only was one dude. That, it wasn't fifty. The it was like hundred and fifty. Yeah. 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 And then Even they the moment where anyway. you think, but when you think she's gonna make it for a little bit, it is such like a oh crap! Like we're rooting yeah. for her so but much. But I was like, don't kill her first. And sure well, enough, they... I was like, damn, y'all no, burn. No, no, well, because no. immediately, well, like seeing the interaction that they have, where she's like, I know you're up to something, and I'll yes. talk to you. I'll yes. talk to you about it later. And then so I knew I was like, something's gonna happen because obviously yeah. we're not gonna get to the mm-hmm. point where I knew she was gonna die. I just I was like, please not first. I, just not first to me to, to me it was different to me it's different to because for i have to have had to face the 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 black guy dying first trope that's in true for that's years, what i <laughs> for decades for decades and this and and when we see that happen in, in, in most movies, the black people die for stupid reasons. Like they die for reasons that black people wouldn't go. They don't go into the basement. Black people don't do the stupid stuff. But in this movie, in this movie, I felt at the very least like she went out and the Latinos went out for a good reason. Like she went out because she was the first to inclinate like, oh, he's he's up to something. But that's he's what no actually... Good. And that's she was actually... the only one that was like onto him from the beginning. And that's, that's why a... I was like, that's a baddie. I actually... I'll counter that because I actually thought the opposite. I was like, literally the only reason why they're killing her is just to say he's the bad guy. And I was like, out of everything you could do, you could have him like 
shoot someone in the back. You could have him do some something else, but like Well, that's what I loved because It's literally he just for her. him. It's just for his character, not for well, her he character. He locks her in though. He locks her in and we're like, "Oh, okay, so he's the bad guy." Yeah. We're already sus of him Im immediately. And then when she does break through, we're like, "Oh, it's not going to work." But they have to because she's on to yeah, him. Like I, I they get have it. to. And, and they all, yeah. she went out hard. Like she went out she like went a out. true. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, no, no black, no black person in the movie goes out that hard. Like, even, even Guzman I did. That, like, I, I thought, I was like, yeah. all right, they're going to do Guzman yeah. dirty. And they did it. I was like, Guzman went like, he yeah. felt like a G. They did other home girl yeah. crazy though. They did, they did her too crazy. raw. I was like, that's yeah. the only one that I was like, bro. Yo, like, I'd rather get my, never mind. I'd rather get like chewed out or something, but don't. Don't do that to me. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. Zack Snyder and his freaking neck breaks. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't appreciate that. Um, <laughs> anyways, I, how did you feel about, let's finish up here. When it comes to uh, the emotional through line, obviously we talked a little bit about the kills and the deaths and all that. Uh, but you said it convinced you, RB3. Did you uh, appreciate the father-daughter Batista uh, thing? Or were you yeah. put off by it? No, I mean, I, 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 I enjoyed that aspect of it too. I mean, you know, I know it's, it's pretty, you know, like Sabrina said, she did make a lot of terrible decisions. It did put a lot of people in bad places, but I felt like to a certain extent, you understood like where she was coming from, from a lot of, from the last plots too. Like, I, like the fact that she was sympathetic towards Gita and like helping out her family and, um, all that stuff. It just, it, it, it seemed like it really worked. Um, and I don't know. I, I, I definitely, I'm conflicted because it it ultimately like and and they have to sell you on that relationship right till the very end yeah. because that's literally at the very end it's just him and her and ultimately it's just going to become her uh, become her but um, at the same time though there's a little bit of me as like uh, what's what is the actual status of their relationship because it seemed like they didn't really talk that much but like yeah. they weren't really having like that much conflict with each other. I don't know. It was a little. Well, you know what I conflict thought? that was coming was like external for like her wanting to run off. You know. The, but you know what I thought for a moment? I thought that she wasn't actually his daughter. Like she yes. was from like, yeah. like her mom married Batista, and and she was kind of like the the daughter mm. that was already from a previous marriage because she called him Scott a few times, and she was yeah, like, yeah, I know what you did I, with it's my, my mom. Set, like, and she the... did some mom. And I was like the disconnect in their relationship, but also yeah. for a moment, I also I thought the same exact thing until we kept watching, and then it was just very clear that that's how kind of like people, you know, if you don't have a parental figure in your life, and then you interact with them like years later or whatever. Also, I just loved how much how much like time had passed, and like the president going like, "Yo, Fourth of July," because that's cool. Like that'd be a cool moment to like nuke this yeah. on the Fourth oh, of July. Yeah, yeah I think he felt uh, like. Realistic. I actually felt like that was like a Trump dig. I don't know if y'all. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, I was like, this, yeah. this is like, I think this is implying that that was Trump that said that. Uh, like, yeah. Even though I was low key kind of pro nuking it too. <laughs> and another, um, go ahead. Well, another thing, like we have, I think there's like a prequel animated uh, series that's coming out, and then also a prequel film uh, that we actually have are the safe guy he's going to be starting starring in and it takes place i think in another country there's some stuff happening um but another thing is like the way that it ended i found yeah. that oh i was just like oh they're bringing that to mexico city now and so that obviously opens up the avenues to so many different directions with this story because they think it's contained and it's about to not be yeah, uh, I was. I couldn't have been more satisfied seeing my man Amari Hardwick pulling out of the safe at the yeah. end. I'm like, yes, yes, he but made only, it. He made it. Only and to all, be he makes it all the way to the plane, and then he's he's sipping the champagne. I'm like, he find ah oh, yes, we get the ending, and he goes to the bathroom I'm like, oh shoot, oh no, oh no. Oh, yeah, man, that was tough. Yeah, the, was black, tough. Yeah. the black, the black at the at the end instead. Yeah, and literally at the very end, he couldn't well, even. The new well, he's alpha. patient zero, bro. Yeah. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's the, the Rudy alpha. Gobert of, of, of this world. <laughs> Shout out to Rudy Gobert. Uh, yeah, I think overall, it's a it's a goofy, fun zombie film. Yeah. And we all kind of thought that this would... I mean, if anyone's seen Dawn of the Dead, I, I kind of felt like it was similar in a way to... to a, it, which is good. I don't think that's a bad thing. That's obviously one mm -hmm. of you know a lot of people's favorite Zack Snyder films. And obviously us, and by us, I mean me and RB3 being like supporters of Zack Snyder for quite a minute. This was a, 
it was a lot of fun to see to yeah. see a Rob zombie film. Uh, was anyone did anyone get reminded by? And I know Zack Snyder. I literally just saw a Netflix video where he talked about the opening credits. But I was like, is this low key Zombie Land? Did y'all get Zombie Land vibes? Have y'all seen Zombie Land? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, I have Zombie Land on Blu-ray. I mean, that was did definitely that one. Button? That was one of the first places my mind went to, but. Also done ten times more skillfully than than Zombieland, in my opinion. He's good. I'm, He's good at opening sequences, man. Zach is good. Yeah, at that. I mean, he literally. Like I mean, th- to me, th- to me, to me, this opening sequence was like next level, though, because it went from the bare minimum context, like the very beginning scene with the outbreak, to a full on society, like within three minutes. Like that's a, that's a really really hard transition like star wars they have to write out a full crawl to give you that much mythology and just literally have you read it yourself like zach did that visually i think that's pretty cool uh final thing i want to say is i appreciate the subtle little hints of like obviously nods like you said sabrina to like previous mm-hmm. horror films there's a little bit of alien in there uh aliens i mean oh alien too but like the whole like we have to bring back the package of like the creature so we can pull the mm-hmm. creature and bring that's from aliens yeah. Um, the guy who's along for the ride, who's actually like sabotaging the team is like another aliens type thing, alien type thing. Uh, but also like the subtle hints of as far as like how we as a country have this obsession with the military. And then when they come back, they're shortchanged and they're working shit jobs. Uh, and the way we meet Batista's character yeah. as like a metal heart of honor recipient uh, who's broke out of his mind and who was giving everything to his country literally and giving everything to that Las Vegas mission. Uh, and he still ended up being broke with a broken life and a broken family. And I was like, that's low key, a, a, a question on that. And I'll, the quarantine refugees also was another mm-hmm. commentary on kind of the real world, uh, ideology of what would come from a situation like this. So, uh, shout out to Zach for that. Uh, yeah. Those were our thoughts on this movie. Uh, I think overall it was pretty enjoyable. It was, uh, it's definitely a wild ride for sure. Uh, where can anyone find you, Sabrina? You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at SabrinaXMonica, also on Twitter at Sabrina on Film. RB3. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Director RB3. And you can find me at Squad Leader Race. Obviously, guys, if this is your first time watching us, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think of Army of the Dead. If you didn't like it, that's totally cool. You can let us know in the comments what you appreciate about it. Or if you did, let us know what your favorite part or scene was in that film or who the standout was in that film. Uh, either way, guys, for the First Cut crew, we're peacing out. Peace.